Screensavers are pretty cool. Originally created to prevent burn-in on the ancient technology known as CRT screens, they quickly became synonymous with fun and fleshy animations that are so mesmerizing you could probably stare at them for hours. They added so much character and customization to your personal computer, which led to them taking the world by storm in the 90s. You got the classic DVD screensaver, the 3D pipes, the Windows 95 maze, freaking flying toasters. But with the invention of newer monitor technology, burn-in just isn't really a thing anymore, and screensavers quickly went out of style. In this video, we'll be taking a deep dive into the history of these nostalgic screensavers, checking out how the art form developed over the years and the eventual fall that came with it. I'm Polygon Donut and welcome to the history of screensavers. One of the very first examples of a screensaver starts all the way back in 1983. The Apple Lisa computer shipped with a screen dimming option that would dim the screen after a few minutes of inactivity. Later that same year, John Socha created a program called Skirt Save for IBM computers, which basically did the same thing. This is also the very first example of the term screensaver being used. And to be honest, it could have just ended at that. Making the screen go dark after some inactivity is all you need to do to solve the problem of burn-in. Adding cool animations on top is actually completely useless, so nobody really came up with that idea for quite a while. Five years later in 1988, what's known as one of the very first screensaver animations ever created was released by Bill Stewart and Ian MacDonald. It was called Magic Screensaver for Windows 2. It featured a very basic and slow animation of some lines moving around, but little did they know the sheer influence this doohickey would have on the world of computers. One year later in 1989, a program called After Dark came out for Macintosh. It was another screensaver pack, this time getting a little more creative with the animations. Most notably, the one titled Starry Night. Hundreds of little pixels lit up your screen, slowly materializing into a city skyline. It's a very calming and surreal visual, almost like it's representing the dreams your computer has when it's not in use. Hence the name After Dark. This pretty visual paired with the subtle theming skyrocketed the program into popularity. They quickly teamed up with the company Berkeley Systems and began work on another screensaver pack for Windows. Another year later in 1990, After Dark for Windows, also known as After Dark 2.0, was released. This version featured a multitude of silly new screensavers that were filled with so much creativity. They also started using images for the first time too, and every screensaver had a bunch of settings to personalize to your liking. And due to the overwhelming popularity, in 1991 they released an expansion pack called More After Dark that featured even more screensavers. The era of screensavers was finally upon us. But before we move on, let's take a look at some of the most interesting options from these packs. First up, Aquatic Realm, the classic fish tank screensaver. Dominoes had three different style options to choose from as you watch random domino pieces get placed around your screen. The snake screensaver auto-generates a bunch of maces and you watch the computer quickly figure it out over and over again. Down the drain did this cool effect on your screen. Gravity put a bunch of bouncing balls everywhere that all leave a trail behind that eventually covers your whole screen. Mowing Man features a man mowing some grass that keeps growing all over your screen. Puzzle turns your screen into a randomly shuffling slutty puzzle. The Tunnel screensaver is really trippy to look at, I love this one. Can of Worms releases a bunch of screen-eating worms all over your desktop, but I guess it's time to address the elephant in the room, the flying toasters. This quickly became the single most popular screensaver of them all, and basically became the entire company's goddamn mascot. The the flying toasters are iconic and really solidified After Dark as the quintessential screensaver program. I mean, what's not to love about this? It's freaking beautiful. They even added a slider for how burnt the toast is. It's a goddamn masterpiece! With the wild success of After Dark and the growing popularity in screensavers in general, in 1992, the next version of Windows, Windows 3.0, actually featured some screensavers that came with the OS by default. First up, we have Flying Windows, which is just a bunch of Windows logos flying across the screen. Mystify features these colorful straight lines bouncing around. Bezier was a similar idea, but with curved lines instead. And finally, Starfield. I mean, Starfield. That made it look like you were flying through space with stars constantly whizzing by. But After Dark didn't stop there, and a few years later they dropped After Dark 3.0, a new version that features a bunch of new screensavers. The most notable addition is Flying Toasters Pro, an upgraded version of the original Flying Toasters. It features a bunch of new animations, which makes the scene a lot more chaotic to watch. They even added a theme song with lyrics on the bottom of the screen. It came with two different song options, either Anthem that sounds like this, or Wagner that sounds like this. 
This one called Guts is really freaking cool. I could watch it generate these colorful patterns for hours. It's actually so sick. Bad Dog is another classic, although it's not really that much of a screensaver because it doesn't really cover anything up. The dog just kind of runs around and digs holes in your screen, and every once in a while, a disembodied voice yells at him. Bad Dog! It is kind of entertaining to see what shenanigans this dingus gets up to. Hey, what the dog doing? Daredevil Dan basically sets up these cool motorcycle ramps for this Dan guy to do. And it's really funny to see all the different outcomes that can happen. The best part is that whenever he gets hurt, bro just sits there and goes, Ow. Ow. Me when I get hit by a car. Ow. Ow. Fish Pro was the new version of the previous fish tank screensaver. You could also watch a freaking rat race on your screen. Look at them go, they're doing such a great job! You Bet Your Head lets you watch a fully simulated trivia game show between these little gizmos and gadgets. And whenever someone gets a question wrong, they just freaking kill them, what the frick? For the next few years, they also started releasing some licensed screensaver packs as well. There's the After Dark Star Trek pack, a few interesting ones being the Brain Cell screensaver and the Triple screensaver. I've never seen Star Trek, so I have no clue what these goobers are, but they look very polite. But of course, we also have the After Dark Simpsons screensaver pack. In this one, you get to watch Homer mow the lawn on your screen, and every once in a while, this geezer walks by and says a goofy all line. Hi -de -ho, neighbor. If you watch it for a really long time, eventually the entire lawn gets mowed and it restarts. You could also watch Homer Simpson slowly eat your entire freaking desktop, every once in a while throwing up an icon. <laughs> After he finishes, your screen just keeps turning into random foods, and he continues to eat it. And finally, there's this one with a bunch of character heads flying around. There's a Looney Tunes pack, a Disney pack, another Star Trek pack, and finally this one called Totally Twisted that has a bunch of really gross themed screensavers. It also has a version of Flying Toasters called Flying Toilets, which is kind of funny, I guess? I don't know. And now we finally arrive in the wonderful year of 1995, the beginning of a new era for screensavers. Windows 95 just came out, and along with it, a wonderful new selection of screensavers, featuring live 3D graphics for the first time. Some some of the most memorable screensavers of all time were introduced in this version. Let's start out with 3D Pipes, because this is my personal favorite screensaver of all time. It's such a mesmerizing and dreamlike visual watching these complex pipe systems infinitely generate and my dumb freaking child brain stared at it for hours on end. There's various settings to play with, and obviously the first thing I did was change the textures to some funny cats, but there's also a little bit of an easter egg on this thingamabobber. If you select the textured option but don't choose a texture, it defaults to this candy cane texture. Texture. Christmas just a, just a week away. I can't wait to spread holiday cheer! Although there's actually another neat little easter egg on this screensaver. If you set the joint type to mixed, every once in a while a freaking 3D teapot model will spawn as the joint instead. It's apparently a 1 in 1000 chance for it to spawn, and it's pretty unnoticeable when it does. The teapot model itself has a bit of lore too. It was created all the way back in 1975 by Martin Newell, and has since been used by 3D graphic artists as a standard reference object for things like size and lighting. It's known as the Utah Teapot and went on to become an inside joke with 3D artists for decades and has been hidden in many 3D softwares and movies. Next, let's talk about the 3D Maze. This has got to be the most recognizable screensaver ever. It feels like peering into another world with rules you don't quite understand. And every once in a while, you spot a few anomalies, like a floating OpenGL logo, or this weird picture on the wall, or even a goddamn rat walking around. And whenever the player runs into this floating rock, they turn freaking upside down! And finally, at the end of it all, a silly little smiley face patiently sits, waiting for your arrival. And the process repeats again and again, infinitely generating maze after maze like clockwork. These are the default textures of the maze, but you can also change them to whatever you want. A selection of psychedelic looking textures come with it by default that look freaking horrible. Some other funny textures people made on the internet include Minecraft, Rainbow Road, Wolfenstein 3D, Quake, Doom, German 985, and more. I made this funny setup with a bunch of cat memes. I also tried out some other random colorful textures, and the final one I made is the Wise Mystical Tree Maze. I'm too lazy to explain how to do it, so here's a tutorial. If you follow the steps correctly, you should end up with this. Whoa, wait a minute, what the devil is going on here? The other three that were added in Windows 95 are the 3D Flower Box screensaver that has a few different options for some funny shapes to make, the 3D Text screensaver, and finally the 3D Flying Objects. This one comes with 3D Flying Windows logo, Rainbow Flying Windows logo, Exploding Ball, Ribbon Thing, I 
I have no clue what this is. Two mysterious ribbon things. Splash, I also have no clue what this is. Twist and textured flag. The flag option shows the same globe image from the 3D maze, but you can change it to whatever you want. But that's not all, because that same year, Windows 95 Plus also released. It's an expansion pack for Windows 95 that includes a bunch of gizmos and gadgets to play with, such as games, themes, and of course, more screensavers. This is also the very first appearance of the beloved Space Cadet pinball game. The screensavers it comes with are travel, nature, mystery, sports, Leonardo da Vinci, dangerous creatures, inside your computer, and the golden era. For some reason, this one randomly plays really creepy noises. The mystery screensaver also has a freaking intro song. I find it really weird that screensavers even started to make sounds at all. Like, wouldn't it be really annoying if your PC just started blasting random noises while you weren't using it? The last one in this pack is this screensaver that's literally just called Windows 95. But that's really confusing and dumb, so most people just call it something like screen blocks. Two years later in 1997, they also released Microsoft Plus for Kids, which is another expansion pack but kid-themed. The screensavers they added here are baseball, bugs, jungle, messy room, which plays a bunch of goofy ass sounds, it's so freaking silly, snowboarding, I'm sorry, but what the frick are these noises? They sound more like Minecraft cave sounds than snowboarding sounds space and underwater. And after all that, the final version of After Dark came out, After Dark 4.0 Deluxe. This package includes all the original ones and a bunch of new and improved ones. First up, the final update to the Flying Toasters. This time it's got a full-on intro sequence and a new song. The toasters themselves once again have fully upgraded designs and animations. With many of these scoundrels getting up to all sorts of antics, it's so much more chaotic than the original. There's also a new baby mode, which changes the music and turns all of them into baby toasters. Of course, we also have another update to the fish tank screensaver, which looks like this now. This one called Rock, Paper, Scissors is really weird. There's just a rock, paper, and scissors wandering around the screen, and whenever they run into each other, they get into a fight, and the fighting animations are so silly looking. Look at them go! Around this point in time, Berkeley Systems was really trying to make After Dark into a full-on franchise, and they even ended up releasing a goddamn video game called After Dark Games. It features a bunch of miscellaneous minigames that are based off of the screensavers. Also, in 1998, there was even an entire animated TV show called Bad Dog, based off of the Bad Dog screensaver. And at one point, there were supposedly flying toaster plushies, too. It's just so weird to me to see things like TV shows and video games based off of literal screensavers. What's next? Are we gonna have movies about the freaking Windows 98 wallpapers? Speaking of Windows 98, that came out, and it didn't come with any screensavers until the Windows 98 Plus expansion pack. First up, there's this one called Cityscape, although I have no clue why it's called that because this has nothing to do with cities. There's also this one with a bunch of water ripples over the Windows 98 logo. Organic art cycles through a bunch of weird looking 3D visuals and it comes with a lot of different presets to choose from. There's the rock and roll one where you get to watch a bunch of electric guitars do a little dance! In this one called science fiction you get to watch a bunch of miscellaneous goobers do a little dance! In the one called architect you get to watch architecture do a little dance! And in falling leaves, well you get the drill. World Traveler is a slideshow of a bunch of photos taken around the world. Although, for some reason, there's just something so odd to me about these photos. Because of the low quality and limited colors, they almost look fake. As if these places don't even exist. It's the same mystical vibe you get from Windows XP wallpapers. And besides that, there's a bunch of screensavers based off of random comics, including freaking Garfield on a pogo stick. Two years later in 2000, Windows ME released, which didn't really add anything. Apparently, it had a version of the 3D pipes where the camera rotates around, but that's about it. And now, in the year 2001, Windows XP just released, which would sadly be the precursor to the death of screensavers. We were given a warning, with the unfortunate removal of the 3D maze. The only new one added is just a Windows XP logo screensaver. At least we have the Windows XP Plus pack, which thankfully comes with more screensavers, with far more advanced 3D graphics. Aquarium is basically the 3D version of the underwater screensaver from the Plus for Kids pack. I also like to consider it a successor to all the After Dark Fish Tank screensavers. In nature, you get to watch a bunch of leaves fall into this insanely high quality RTX 3D water. Da Vinci is a 3D version of the one from Windows 95 Plus. And I've always thought both of these are really ugly. Space is a 3D version of the Kids Space screensaver and you kinda just watch this astronaut 
fly around. There's also Robot Circus. I have no clue what this is. Sand Pendulum is pretty cool. It comes with two backgrounds, either Grotto or Checkerboard. And finally, Mercury Pool, which has two options as well, either Cavern or Industrial. I want to swim in the goddamn radioactive Windows XP cavern! But now, the looming death of screensavers is finally upon us. The popularization of new LCD screens that don't get burn in began, and CRTs quickly went out of style. In 2007, another version of Windows came out, Windows Vista. This version literally removes every single previous screensaver, including every single one that Windows XP just added. The only survivor of the great Windows screensaver massacre is the 3D text. They did add a few new screensavers in this version, including Aurora, which has this satisfyingly soft Aurora visual. Bubbles, which puts a bunch of bouncing bubbles all over your screen. An upgraded version of Mystify that now features a more soft and glowy aesthetic. Ribbons that covers the screen in soft glowy ribbons. And finally, Energy. While these new screensavers are great, don't get me wrong, it marks the death of the original aesthetic. They essentially removed anything that looks too 90s or unrefined, transitioning into a more soft and shiny aesthetic. This new aesthetic is known as Futiger Arrow, and while it's an amazing aesthetic that I quite enjoy, the whimsical 90s screensavers will be greatly missed. A few years later in 2009, Windows 7 released, which didn't add a single new screensaver. And to make matters even worse, they removed the Aurora and Energy screensavers, which were literally just added, bringing the roster down to only four animated screensavers to choose from. In 2012, Windows 8 released, which didn't budge the screensaver selection at all. Then in 2015, Windows 10 released, yet again with no changes. Then in 2021, Windows 11 released, yet again with no changes whatsoever. Also, throughout the 2000s, Mac computers received some pretty cool default screensavers, such as Flurry, Arebescu, Drift, I really like this one, Monterey, Ventura, and Shell. Even though the era of cool screensavers is over, they never truly died. There's tons of websites out there that let you download custom screensavers made by people all over the world, and many old screensavers have been converted to be used in modern Windows. And now that it's been so long, the screensavers that used to be so new have solidified themselves as nostalgic and historical art pieces of the early world of computers. Even though they're completely useless and always have been, they deserve to be appreciated for the creativity and customization that they added to computers. But before we go, I'll leave you with one final screensaver pack. For April Fools in 2021, the official Minecraft YouTube channel posted a trailer for a Minecraft screensaver pack that perfectly parodies the style of the classics. They also named it Minecraft Plus, which is obviously a joke about Microsoft Plus. There's 12 different screensavers that get randomly selected. There's the Flying Creepers, which is the Minecraft version of Flying Windows. This one has a bunch of 3D items floating around. In this one, you watch a bunch of dirt slowly grow into grass blocks. This one has a random block bouncing around and the texture changes on every bounce. The Glow Squid screensaver is obviously a parody of Flying Toasters. This one is a 3D block that has a different texture on each side. This one is a massive grid of every block texture rotating around. There's even a screensaver of an in-game menu panorama that was used in a few versions of Minecraft. And with that, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and check out my other hyperfixation videos while you're at it. Okay, bye!